With the rise in online dating apps and DMs, sending unsolicited nude photos has become extremely common. In fact, over half of women say someone has sent them an explicit image that they did not ask for. Now the state of Texas is looking to crack down on these lewd nudes. Sending unsolicited nude photos in Texas can now land you with a $500 fine and a criminal record. A new law makes it illegal to send sexually explicit pictures without the receiver's consent. The law applies to text messages, email, dating apps, social media, and even airdrop. The bill's goal is to forbid technology-enabled sexual harassment, but critics say it's vague and difficult to enforce. Even if the recipient welcomes the photo, but does not explicitly say it, the sender could still be penalized. Critics say the law could even apply to people sending images for medical purposes. So will this new law hold people accountable or just cause more problems? Joining us today is criminal defense attorney Jennifer Lisa Dubler. Welcome to Welcome. you. So Thank Welcome, you counselor. Let, let's break this down as a group, but I want to ask you, legally speaking, do you think that this law is effective? Look, I think this law has its best intentions at heart, but I think the problem with this law is it's incredibly overbroad. So it, it seeks to punish sexually explicit photos, meaning I'm a new mother. I have a three-month-old at home. If I were to send a photo to my friend of me breastfeeding my child for advice and counsel, I could potentially be subject to this law. The second problem with this law is there's no intent requirement. So I could have the most innocent of intentions in sending this photo, and I could be subject to criminal liability. How is this going to be enforced? I mean, to your point that this is incredibly broad. So who's actually bringing this complaint? And then how is law enforcement possibly going to investigate this, given all the platforms that were just described? Sure. I mean, I think that's a huge problem with this law. It would take the recipient of the photo going to law enforcement and saying, hey, I got this photo. I think it's inappropriate. And then hopefully law enforcement would do some due diligence. Hopefully they would investigate, look at the call logs on the phone to see if maybe a, a conversation took place, and then they'd have to talk to people. Because who says that there wasn't a conversation in public exactly. that took place saying, hey, okay, right. please send me that photo. Without this law, let's just say that you're a woman and you're receiving repeated nude images of a well, man that you're not- 78% of women. Right, so, so, I mean, this what I want to know is legally, number. what is the recourse for that woman now, without a law like this? So, I mean, I think there's a distinction between criminal laws and civil laws, okay. right? So you could file a civil complaint and seek damages in civil court. The distinction here is that now we're seeking to punish somebody criminally. And I don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with the law, but I think as it's written, it's incredibly overbroad. So the way it's so, written so is your that's, problem. That's problem. Okay. Yeah. As a woman, and certainly as a physician, and I'd actually love to ask you about this because I get unsolicited medical photos all the time. Well, you that, should see my this, phone. Yeah, my that very much nothing but boobs would, and butts. Yeah, that would and violate this and, right and off and the a bat. Lot of, yeah. And a lot of those, I mean, I'm not asking for these pictures. Correct. I mean, some of them, that, like, how do I look? Am I okay? Should yeah. I, am I, do I have an infection? Should I be worried? I mean, or yeah. Drew, you my did a wife good job. sees my phone and yeah, she goes. Yeah, no, seriously. Like, so I think there's there's this one level of HIPAA and federal privacy law where physicians in our specialties right. are getting these photos of people's private areas, but then there's the second level of practicality. So as a woman receiving these unsolicited texts, I'm certainly thinking about my daughter who's in middle mm -hmm. school. I would not want her getting texts like this from classmates. But then the flip side is. What you're describing of a police officer doing due diligence, going through call logs, going through texts, trying to figure out intent, as a practical taxpayer, I also wonder, like, is this the right uses of our resources? You know, there, that's a lot of time I mean, and taxpayer feasible? money yeah. going into seeking out intent when then it might be revenge porn. I mean, there's so many levels of this. But why would someone lodge a complaint using this law unless they felt like they were being harassed? And if you feel like you're being harassed, don't you need to have a method by which to, to get some justice? Yeah. I agree with you that we need protection. Harassment is not okay. But I think something like this that's so broad that could be construed on so many levels may just be a tremendous waste of resources. It may not be really practical. Well, and that's, from a legal point of view, I mean, you're, I, I don't envy your job with, with what's going on now in cell phones and internet and bullying and harassment and all these things. I mean, it's, it's opening up a whole new area of law that's sort of unchartered and we don't know exactly how to how to navigate it. 